I want to tell you the story of something that happened to me when I was only a little older than you. That was the day I found out that I carried a genetic mutation which dramatically raises my risk of cancer. I want to tell you three lessons I've learned from that event. The first lesson is about the purpose of science. I spent the first few months after I got that bad news trying to come to terms with it. And during this period, I came across a paper by this AI professor, Daphne Kohler. In her paper, they take images of cells from cancer patients and they apply an AI model to predict whether the patients will survive. And I thought it was the most amazing thing. And more importantly, it gave me hope. I thought, fine, I had this cancer problem, but maybe AI could help. And this, in the end, has always been the thing drawing me to science. Why you all fill me with hope. It is a deeply human endeavor, a deeply hopeful endeavor. It's about improving, even saving, people's lives. It's about the woman whose cancer is caught earlier because a deep learning algorithm spotted a shadow in her mammogram. It's about the queer kid who finds love earlier because a dating algorithm suggested a soulmate in a city of strangers. It's about the racist policy which ends earlier because a data scientist stood up in court and said, this is unjust and the data proves it. The biggest factor determining your impact in the world will not in fact be how good at math you are. It will be the projects you choose to work on. Choose human projects and choose your projects carefully. The second lesson my mutation taught me is how the stories we live shape the work we choose to do. The problem is that the way we currently select scientists turns away all but those with a narrow set of stories. Through a thousand arbitrary barriers on race and gender and wealth and nationality, we turn geniuses away. And it makes our science worse. It makes our understanding worse. You see this when our genetic risk scores for cancer work better in people of European ancestry because that's who our scientists have historically collected data on. You see this when black women die at breast cancer at higher rates than white women for reasons we still do not fully understand. The barriers to equal participation in science are not just a problem for fairness or equity or justice, they are a problem for scientific rigor. And when I went to TJ, I saw clearly both those barriers and the people fighting to tear them down. I heard so many mocking comments from more experienced students in my computer science class that I thought I was hopeless at it, even though I'm now a computer science professor. But I can quote to you verbatim too, the words of encouragement from the teachers and friends and even, yes, the captain of the math team as they insisted that I stay. So tonight, I want to say the same thing to those of you who are wondering whether you have a place in science. Please stay, please stay. I want you to pay attention to that feeling in your bones that this is beauty you cannot look away from, whatever the ugliness of our unequal world. We need you. The very dimensions of difference that make people doubt your right to be in the room are precisely the reasons we need you. They are what let you obsess over the scientific problems we've too long ignored to see the solutions we've too long overlooked. Please stay. Here is the final lesson my mutation taught me. The day I found out I carried it, I wrote down a resolution which has been immensely valuable to me since then. To live urgently, mindful that our time is running out. We have so many daily demands, exams, papers, applications, that encourage us to fly through time blind. But your life truly is yours to do with what you want, and it is the only chance that you will ever get to do that. I hope that you will choose, with your brilliance, to make the world a better and more equal place. But even more than that, I hope that whatever you choose to do, you do it with deliberation and reverence for the immense privilege we've been given. Not privilege in the social justice sense of the word, but simply the privilege of being briefly conscious in an extraordinary universe, unimaginably unlikely and therefore precious beyond measure. Congratulations, class of 2023. Have a wonderful night with your families. Have a wonderful summer. I cannot wait to see what you do next.